Hey everyone watching out there, uh, David from Formative, and today I'm super excited to have both uh, two awesome Formative certified educators with me, Don Fear and uh, also Dean Benjamin. Hey guys. Hi. Hello. How's it going? It's going, it's going good on my end. I hope it's, it's good for, for all of our viewers out there, wherever you're watching, whenever you're watching. Um, so today we're going to be uh, talking about the Formative Community Center, which is uh, really just the hub for our teachers who use Formative to uh, connect and, and collaborate with one another and become certified too. So I'm just going to start by uh, sharing my screen and just uh, give uh, Don and Dean the, the chance to introduce themselves. So here it goes. So uh, the Formative Community Center, your new favorite PLN or personal learning network. And so first off, uh, Dean, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Sure. Uh, my name is Dean Vetterman, and I teach uh, math at Archbishop M. C. O'Neill Catholic High School in Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. And I've been a proud uh, formative certified educator for almost a year now. And uh, I use Twitter quite a bit. So if you wanted to connect after I'd love to meet new people for sure. So I'm um, at Vendy 55 and I also have a little Weebly up there where I put some of my work that I share with everybody. So if you feel like checking that out, go ahead. And I just love using formative because really when it boils all down to it with all the features and the community and everything, I really do believe it's uh, made me a, a better teacher. And that's why I love this PLN. And that's why I'm excited about uh, having this conversation today. And I'll turn it over to my fellow Canadian. Awesome. Well, before we do that, I just want to make sure we're focused on the right screen here. I'm sharing this right screen here. So let me make sure I'm selected myself here. And uh, awesome. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm Dawn Fryer, and I teach um, elementary, grade seven and eight, math and science. Um, I teach at Lincoln Heights Public School, which is in Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. And I've been a certified educator for about three years. So I came across formative quite a while ago and, and I have loved it ever since. So I've been a big proponent of it. Uh, I'm very active on Twitter. Um, you can find me at Mrs. Fryer. And I love formative because it allows me to learn and work uh, with my students more effectively. So I can make use of the time in the classroom to give feedback and watch what they're doing and get data from them when they're doing their regular activities so i don't have to focus on the data gathering at the time so that's oh. why i love it yeah it's uh it's all about um all about making the most of that time in class with students um thank you both for for uh introducing yourselves and uh yeah just one comment about our certified educator program to begin with it's, it's gone through many iterations i think about three years ago, we had our first iteration with uh, our formative dream team. Um, and then we had our, our formative educator uh, badge and program. And now it's uh, evolved with, with our community center, which we're going to talk about today. So yeah, both Don and, and Dean uh, are two educators that I've known for quite some time and just really excited to, to be presenting with you guys today. Um, but just to start us off here, I'm going to go ahead and give uh, everyone out there watching just a quick overview of the community center. Um, so as I was mentioning before, uh, the community center is really a hub for uh, teachers who use formative, uh, like yourself, uh, to collaborate. And so it's a place where you can ask questions about, you know, how to use formative features, uh, if current features exist. You can even share uh, feature requests that you have. So things you'd like to see um, from formative in the future. Along with that, it's also a place where you can uh, share formatives with other teachers who teach the same subjects and, and grade levels as you do. And you can get feedback from those other content area teachers about, you know, uh, your formative, whether, you know, it's just uh, some positive encouragement, some uh, notes on how to make it even better or just some follow-up questions that always leads to some great discussions. Uh, but I, I really love the community center for that reason. Uh, 
because you know I, I know sometimes you might be the only one using formative in your own school so it's it's really nice to have uh, this place where you can connect with other content area teachers who use formative too um, on top of that as I started to to uh, to mention um, you can also seek and, and share implementation ideas for for using formative uh, for your subject area, or even for just a teaching interest you have. Uh, maybe you're working on differentiation, or flipping learning, or uh, student badging, whatever it is. Uh, we have talked about so many different things in our community, just about you know great teaching ideas, and you'll find that support. Um, and also, uh, our community center is welcome to to everyone. Um, so. You know, if you have a formative account, whether it's a free account, a premium account, you can can join our community. And uh, you know, whether you're a new user or you're very experienced with formative, we would love to have you on board as well. Um, and lastly, uh, really by becoming a member of our community, you're going to uh, really learn how to use formative uh, as as it continues to evolve. And, and with that, you'll have the opportunity to become certified and, and join a team of, uh, of educators who are really passionate about using formative and um, really passionate about talking about, you know, ideas for improvement, enhancements we can make, as well as just collaborating with one another to, uh, to, to use formative uh, via, you know, webinars like this, via projects like you know trying out our, our collaboration feature uh, there's just so many ways that you can collaborate with with other excellent educators who use formative by becoming certified so i just wanted to quickly share here you know where community center is and so basically um here's the direct url it's discuss.goformative.com and you'll see uh just like i was showing you on that slide there's that layout of the different uh categories where you can do those different things. And there's a private category at the bottom, which will unlock if you become certified. Uh, but on top of just visiting that URL, you can also uh, visit go, goformative.com and, and just write from your, write from your own data uh, by just clicking on the question mark symbol in the top right of the screen and going down to community center. And it's gonna um, take you right back to the community center. So uh, that was just a brief overview of the community center. And um, basically, at this point, I'd love to turn it over to uh, Dean and Don to just talk about some of the different ways they, they so some of the different things they love about the, the community center. And so uh, I think, Dean, uh, you're up. Yep. yep. So, I, so one I, thing I really yeah, um, yeah. think is amazing about yeah. using, uh, using the community, uh, the community center, center is that it's a very that, active, a very active place. Uh, oh, I'm getting oh, some echo. Getting is, that echo. is that me? Uh, it might be. Maybe we can just uh, mute ourselves, Don, for now. Uh, sometimes that happens. Oh, can you still hear me? All right. So you guys can still hear me? We're good? All right. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, it's a very active uh, place. Like I, I, me, I've been lucky. It's part of my uh, daily routine. Basically, I, I love using Twitter, like I mentioned before. And another thing I check in uh, daily too is I'll check out uh, the GoFormative community and I'll see what things people are posting. And there's almost a question every day or uh, questions being uh, revisited. And there's so many ideas and resources and questions that are posted. And some deal directly with formative and how to's. Um, some are like, what's the best way to uh, use formative assessment? So it's a great blend of uh, teaching pedagogy and also how to use the um, formative uh, to the best of your ability and stuff too. And I find that people are really supportive and willing to share. People are throwing their, out their formatives and, uh, hey, go ahead and use this or what do you think? And uh, if you do that, people are giving great comments like, yeah, I'm going to use this. Or, hey, if you add this in, your uh, formative would even be more effective. Or have you thought of this? So I just find it's uh, really um, amazing to uh, go there. And it's an excellent way to be involved in the community 
and grow your professional learning network, uh, network, uh, learn a new tool, uh, meet new friends, uh, share with a colleague. And there's a lot of thought generators. Sometimes when I just go in there and I just go, hmm, and I file it somewhere in the back of my mind. And then uh, I'll find like a month later, go, oh, yeah, I think I read something about that on uh the form of community and I'd go back and check and oh yeah. And then I'd throw out a couple of things. So, uh, you know, one example uh, of there is we talked about app smashing. I think that's one of our most active uh, threads. And if you go in there, people are saying, I've used this with formative. Have you tried that? Like I found another couple of really cool tools just by going and reading that post and see what people are, are sharing. So um, I just find uh, the posts are really active there's lots of uh, great community members in there that are supportive and, and active with that for sure. Sorry about that. Thanks. Thanks so much for sharing. Um, yeah. If you guys just wanted to point this out, I'm not going to jump to the link right now, but you'll see we have links provided here, which, so, you know, wherever you're watching, whenever you're watching, uh, you'll have access to these slides so you can jump into those topics and explore them. Um, but uh, yeah, I think Don, if you want to share next, that'd be awesome. And Don, I think you're currently muted too. I'm mute. I'm mute. There we go. There, go. there we go. The, uh, the uh, feedback. 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 Okay. So maybe it's me. There, okay. The community um, is a great place because it's where you can look for help, but you can also help others. And most teachers that I know, uh, it's one of the things that they um, enjoy most is helping other people learn. So the it's a really open place and everybody's willing to share and help uh, anybody else who has a question. And there's so many different people. So when you look at the slide, you can see that the uh, number of people that have responded to the various questions. You can see all the little icons and then you can see the number of posts and replies that have been made. And everybody's willing to jump in and, and help out with whatever they know the most about. Um, but it's not just on how to use a particular feature. It's also that people are jumping in and sharing their own formatives. It's like, well, I, I, tried doing that topic or I tried doing that tool. I tried doing that particular feature and this is how I used it. And they'll just send you the clone code for their formative. And you can learn a lot just by seeing how somebody else used something. So there is a link on the slide that um, takes you to the general use topic and you can see all the different topics that are there. I also like that when you go into the community you have all the little um, numbers that show up beside your profile so that you can see that you have posts that you've commented on that there's follow-ups on or who's that you have likes or feedback or messages from people that it's really easy and quick to jump in even when you only have like five or 10 minutes to use it. Yeah, Don, if you want to keep rolling with it, I think you're this next one as well. This next reason. Okay. Okay. Um, well, the other thing I really like is that uh, I like to hear what success other people have with formative, and then I can learn from that and further my success with it. Um, many people go to conferences or they go to prevent, present PD to their school or their district. And there's a post there about even asking what events were attending. That uh, the biggest interest to me is when you find people who have presented it for the very first time and hearing how much success they've had with that. So that's uh, something I always enjoy hearing about other people's positive experiences with it with other people. Definitely. I, I just, uh, I totally agree. And um, just to highlight that specific post here. Uh, yeah, this is just uh, an example of, of our certified educators just sharing the different events they're attending. And, you know, I think I've seen in the past too, just 
you know, educators getting the chance to, to present at, at events too. And everyone's really encouraging in terms of just saying, you know, congrats on being accepted to present there, uh, you know, sharing resources to, to help them prepare. Um, it's just one example, I think, of uh, just the positive vibes that, that we have in their community and just encouraging everyone in whatever their endeavor is. Um, yeah, and Dean, at any point, if you want to mute yourself or Don, when, you know, whenever anyone's sharing, feel free to just uh, jump in. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and head back to that other slide. And uh, let's see. And go, Dean. I'm going to mute myself. Here you go. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I was just, I'm sorry, I just realized I was muted right there. All I was saying uh, was that, uh, that just to illustrate that example we have here, it's, it's really awesome that, you know, educators are so supportive of one another in, in sharing in the community. And uh, yeah, all I was, all I was going to say was feel free to jump in whenever guys, uh, whenever anyone's sharing, but Dean, I'll turn it over to you for this, this, uh, this okay. last reason. Okay. okay. You can hear me. Okay. I just can't see the slide. So I'm not sure if that's something I did. Oh, Sorry, I, Sorry can't I can't slide. see the slide. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. All right. All right. So, so one thing one that, thing uh, that uh, I, I, sorry, I think I'm on again. Muted again. Or somebody's or muted. Somebody's muted. Oh. All right. So, um, oh, there we go. I've been a little bit interesting to find on my phone here. So it's all good. So uh, one thing I've really enjoyed is uh, doing slow chats. And it's a great way to focus on a theme or a topic in education and do so in an asynchronous manner. So I really do enjoy, like, uh, on Monday nights, it's part of my routine to go do the forum of chat and go in there. And it's uh, one half an hour of super fast fun where you're on there and you're reading posts and you're making posts and ideas. And that's a lot of fun. But I also like the slow chats where... You can think more a little bit about deeper about the uh, question that's posed. Uh, you have more time to reflect. You have more characters to uh, type in to g give something uh, feedback. So, and and you can revisit things. And if you uh, if you're busy on a Monday and you didn't have a chance to reply, you could do it on a Wednesday and go back in there. And you can even go visit chats that have previously happened uh, and and revisit ideas. So. The slow chats just give you a really time to kind of collect your thoughts, kind of like it's almost like an online journal and people are sharing and giving some uh, great uh, information. And in there you can uh, add on, you can, I've seen it go on different tangents and uh, some of the threads have gone in different ways, which have been really uh, interesting that you might not have got, like say in a, a, tweet, a Twitter chat. Um, and you can post questions for the moderators. And the moderators that have been for the slow chats have been great. They keep the conversations going. They ask, uh, you know, a lot of probing questions, and then they'll uh, go in there and they'll take things to another level. So it's a great place to have uh, a lot of, uh, you know, feedback and that type of thing. So I do have a link on the side, and it's just exploring, uh, you know, new heights with uh, formative. So when you go in there, you can see here, that uh, the questions posed, how do you feel, use formative to differentiate uh, your instruction. And then there's a, uh, the questions are posed, there's, that happens all week. So usually there's a question on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. But like I said, you can jump back and forth or you could wait till Friday and put them all in. There's really no pressure. And you see as it's scrolling by here, the robust uh, in, um, conversation going on people are giving likes people are replying you can go back and edit things uh, you can share this information uh, with a lot of people so um, and the community is really great for doing that they really uh, you know I, I really hope someday I get to meet everybody or you know in person because I'd like to shake everybody's hands for how they've uh, you know uh, grown my professional development and helped me uh, do a better job in my classroom so uh, these are a great opportunity to learn and share for sure.
Awesome. Thank you so much, Dean. Um, yeah, I totally agree. I think, uh, yeah, with the slow chats, it's just a, it's a nice way of, of engaging in self-paced learning because because you can just access it at any time and revisit a topic months later and uh, spark up the conversation again. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, share my screen again. And you know, now that we've gone over the the public community, um, we're gonna talk about the uh, the certified educator program and just some of the opportunities that are available there. So uh, sharing my screen once more and. Um, Coming back to the slides. And uh, so just a brief overview of our certification program. Uh, basically, within our community, uh, you're able to earn uh, achievement badges for basically learning and collaborating with other educators within uh, this space, within our community center. So uh, just to show you those badges really quickly, if you create you know, a formative account and you log into the community, you'll see there's this uh, menu in the top right-hand corner of the screen where you can jump to those achievement badges and check them out. Uh, but you can see just, just as from a quick look, the, these badges aren't just meaningless tasks. They're really just, they're really meant to uh, just help you learn how to learn within this space and, and find great ideas to take back to your classroom and, and collaborate with other great educators. So for example, there's just a, a badge for having read 10 topics within our community. And we'll come down here and in level two, there's more collaborative badges like, you know, helping somebody out and giving them advice for, for their subject area uh, or for their teaching interests. That's, that's the show and tell badge. Um, but uh, once you earn the uh, level one and level two badges there, I think there's about 11 of them, uh, then you can apply to be a certified educator. And so uh, really by earning those badges and, and applying, you're really showing us as you know, team formative that you're interested in you know, uh, connecting with other teachers who use formative and that you're interested in collaborating with them and, and you're interested in collaborating with us. So uh, you know, if you become a certified educator, you're gonna unlock some, some awesome things because you know, that trust that we've that we've uh, that we've formed over time, and so you'll be able to play a deeper role in the development of formative and help design features that you want to see. Uh, you'll also be able to get sneak peeks of of new features that we're working on. I think even today, Don and Dean, I'm not sure if you saw that, but I wanted to give you guys a inside look at what we're what we're working on in terms of the view responses page and, and get your feedback. Uh, and along with that, you'll also be able to vote on features that you want. And so I think Dean's gonna talk a little bit more about this or I think maybe Don actually uh, in just a few minutes, but uh, yes, you'll be able to vote on the features that you wanna see. And uh, lastly, I'd say, and this is pretty much like the whole other half of the program is we just wanna give you more exciting ways to, to collaborate with other certified educators and. Uh, implement formative in your classroom and uh, just spread the learning. So uh, now, you know, Don and Dean are just going to talk about a few of their uh, favorite parts of the of the certification program and being a certified educator. So I'll go ahead and mute myself again. And uh, yeah, I'll just switch from slide to slide, guys. So feel free just to go off of one another here. There you go. So, um, yeah, I really enjoy uh, talking about slow chats before, and uh, I've had the opportunity to lead a few slow chats, and it's really amazing to get into these really meaningful and deep uh, conversations with other community members. Um, you know, a lot of people made me think and then made me reflect, and and just uh, and I like the slow chat ability, like we mentioned before, that you know. It doesn't really come in right away, but then the next day I go, oh, yeah, I should have asked that, or, oh, that was a great point. I want to go back and, and visit that. So uh, when you get a chance to moderate one of these, you can pick a topic uh, um, that interests you uh, and really kind of delve into it and see what other people are thinking. So uh, you can ask lots of cool questions, 
And people are really open to saying, oh, this is what I think or that's think. And like I've said before, one thing, a, a common theme throughout the whole community is that it's so much professional development. And like I said at my first comment, this definitely makes me a way better teacher because I'm doing a lot more reflective on my practice. So you get to explore your passions and then bring out the passion in others. And uh, some of those ones have just, uh, just been on fire and just, uh, just amazing. Like the example um, that we have on the side here, uh, it's just, uh, you know, how, how can you use formative build relationships with your students? So I got to lead this question, and this is something that's near and dear to my heart. And it's something that Dawn said uh, earlier in her introduction. Um, that's what formative really allows me to do a lot. And that's why I think I'm a better teacher, because I don't have to go collect the data or I don't have to do uh, some of these things where I get the data and I can make decisions uh, quicker and get to see where my kids are at and give every kid uh, a chance to have a voice. I feel that I have uh, way better relationships with my kids. I'm able to meet them on a different level. Uh, some of the kids that might not always talk, um, I get a chance to hear what they have to say. And that's what this slow chat was all about. So once we went in there and people were saying those types of things and seeing like, oh, I've used this audio recording to have even little ones go in there and, and uh, share what they feel. Or I used the show your work and used an emoji thing. And, uh, you know, students were circling how they felt and I had a way better understanding of where they were. And then the students realized that, uh, you know, hey, this is a way to kind of communicate with my teacher. It's a safe environment. Uh, it's respectful. And it definitely has grown a relationship. So out of this slow chat and hearing how other people are using it or reflecting on myself, I do definitely believe that uh, it's given me an opportunity to definitely become better. And as a certified educator, it's an honor to lead these chats and to, uh, you know, walk with people and talk with people. It's been amazing. Well, uh, Don, I think you're uh, up next. Here we go. Sharing my screen again. There we go. I'm muted. Um, next uh, slide's about participating in the feature votes. And uh, in my previous life, I was a software developer um, and a software support person. So I'm a computer scientist by training and being involved in a feature vote is uh, is really a connection to me because not only do I kind of get my hands a little bit into the development cycle in terms of getting the feedback, but it really, uh, I feel it's really important for teachers to have that voice, just like we want our kids to have voice and choice in the classroom. Us having a voice and some choice in how the product moves forward so that it's the best product for us actually in the classroom. That I've dealt with some developers elsewhere who have no idea what really happens in a classroom and they don't accept that feedback. And uh, I think having this as part of the uh, development cycle to see what we most want in the product um, is really important and uh, I find it very valuable. I would also add to that too, that it's just amazing, like ways I didn't think of using formative before it gets mentioned in there. And uh, I really like the fact that it's like, Oh yeah, I could use it for that. So even part of the vote, even some of the different uh, suggestions and, and that have really made me think about, Oh, how could I use formative better? Or how could I use this to reach my kids better? So I like that as part of the vote uh, as well. Definitely. Some great ideas come out of uh those feature votes and um, yeah, just to give everyone watching out there just a, uh, a little more detail about the feature votes themselves. They're, they're every week. And so, uh, and really what we focus on is just uh, presenting our certified educators with things that we've heard from around our community. Uh, smaller updates in the sense that we're hopefully able to develop them quicker, but also really meaningful updates too. So it's, it's awesome because, you know, we might have a, hundred different things that we could develop uh, in, the, in the next week or, or start to develop in the next week. And it's, it's helpful to, and you know, that we've had a lot of feedback for all of them and, and it's helpful to get that extra just feedback from our certifi certified educators on 
you know, what's the most important thing at this moment for, for teachers to have um, as, as things are changing. Um, so uh, I think next is, uh, Dean, you're gonna be up next. I'm gonna meet myself again. All right. Well, one one uh, definitely perk about being um, a certified educator, and David had mentioned it before, uh, because of the trust that's involved and that people are really uh, feel safe in that. There's a lot of cool extra, um, you know, add-ons and uh, events that we get to do. So one thing we were able to do, uh, I know David came up with this idea, and just like you see on TV, we had an Iron Chef uh, activity we had to do. So. There was like three, for example, when I got to do it, there was three of us and uh, we were given uh, kind of our little crate full of uh, unknown ingredients, which came from within formative, like the different features in formative, like you might get a, a show your work or you might get the audio feature or you might uh, get a categorized feature or a combination of those. But then we app smash too and you get maybe something like, I know the one we did the one time was uh, using SpeakPipe, and we put that in. Uh, the one example that I have on the side, uh, I used uh, Mentimeter, and I was able to embed that. And uh, again, it was like coming up with all these ingredients and finding a really satisfying dish that would uh, you could use in the classroom to engage kids. And as Don said before, give them voice and choice and to kind of be able to express things and differentiate learning. So um, it was just really high energy. We had a time limit and we were in their building and that. So it was nice to be on that end of the things too, like being creative. I know as teachers, we, a lot of us still have that bug about how, you know, inside of us that, oh, how can I make something look really cool and, and put it together and that type of thing. So it was kind of fun on that end as well to, to be engaged in making something under the gun and kind of a little bit of a, a game show kind of an atmosphere in there and put it together. So um, the one example I have on the side there, um, you know, basically I did a formative assessment on using formative and I was able to uh, and put a, a enhance a PDF doc in there uh, that using formative and using short answers from formative and show your work from for uh, show show your work from go formative. But I also was able to use some outside uh, tools such as Wakelet and Mentimeter, a uh, Mentimeter to kind of cook up a really cool dish. And uh, I, you know I've used this actually in a couple of um, uh, little seminars and best practice sharing that I've used too. So. I got a, a lot of use out of this too. So it was just great to see how other people as well would take these ingredients or use other ingredients in a different way. And it was really engaging. It just shows the power and the flexibility of formative that, uh, you know, your imagination is really your limit on a, on a few of these things too. So, and then you, I, you know, share these in a library and people could go in and, uh, you know, use these uh, if they needed to. So again, it was a lot of fun and I really, I look forward to the next time we get to uh, carve our knives and, and dig into another Iron Chef for sure. Don, have you had any experience with the Iron Chef? Yes, I uh, I participated in uh, one of the Iron Chef and there was three of us in that one too. And we each got our little box and, and our little extra thing that we had to try and spice it up with. And um, it was just a lot of fun and that, you know, as you've probably seen, I love my Bitmojis. And so I'm always looking for ways to throw them into slideshows and activities and stuff. So it, uh, it was a lot of fun. And from that, that kind of put me on to um, uh, Crippo and to, on to the Iron Chef protocol that comes out of his book. And it sometimes doing these one, these little things kind of leads you down this rabbit hole of learning and uh, you discover all sorts of cool things. And and uh, another one we might throw in sometime is the Fast and the Curious, which is one of my favorite protocols from him too. So um, I haven't tried this one yet with my kids, but it's on my radar to get to in the near future. Awesome. Well, I love, I'd love to explore that with you guys, Fast and the Curious, Fast and the Formative. <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's see. Uh, I, I realize I had been maybe sharing Dean's screen uh, over here. So just for our viewers out there, just wanted to reiterate, uh, this is the 
This is the Iron Chef formative that Dean put together with different tools like Wakelet, uh, different show your work quests or different formative question types like you know, show your work, uh, and then other tools like Mentimeter that he embedded in here too. Um, and so, yeah, I think uh, we're gonna jump over to Dawn for for just this last reason she she loves the uh, the formative community center and the certification program. So let me meet my... Okay. Um, and some of the other unique opportunities is that um, being part of the formative community, it's allowed me to do things like this webinar. And my first webinar was making math fun. And um, I've written a blog post about how I use formative as a piece of my one of my breakouts, uh, several of them now actually which uh, at the time really pushed me outside my comfort zone being in this uh, video medium. And so this has allowed me to grow as a teacher because I can then be in the student perspective and try new things with my students. Um, as Dean has talked a lot about being part of the Twitter chats and the slow chats, I've learned a lot and I've also, um, been a leader and encouraged other people to participate and add to them. And that's been a new environment. And um, he's also talked about the Iron Chef protocol, which I really had a lot of fun with. Uh, the two ladies I was on with for that were just hysterical. And uh, so we just had a hoot. And I've been on hangout meetings from people all over the world, like, um, Dean and I are both in Canada, but I've been on hangouts with people in New Zealand and Australia and getting to find out what their curriculum is like, their schools are like, and just having this worldwide experience. And I have also taken formative to uh, ed tech summits. I've presented twice. I've been at uh, other conferences where I've presented, and I've also been part of uh, math PD sessions for my school board. Um, and presented formative as a tool for people to use in their classroom. So on the slide, you can kind of see some of the, the slide decks that uh, I've used and slow chats that I've been a part of. I've kind of thrown those up there. So it has uh, really allowed me to grow as a presenter and as a facilitator of learning for the teachers and adults around me, as well as learn for teaching my own kids. Let's see. There you go. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Don. Um, I think uh, last thing we we're just going to share just a few tips for those of you who are new to the community or just those of you who have been with us for a while and looking for, for new tips, just a, a few tips for, for engaging in the community. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull this up. And I guess I'll go first just for the sake of the mic. Uh, uh, I'm just going to say here, uh, I, I, one tip I have for, for actually, you know, I think it's probably best to start from the left because mine is more of an advanced tip. So maybe Dean, if you want to go first, share your tip. Sure. Sure. Yep. No, I, uh, and just to add on to what Don was just saying, actually, when we started to make these uh, slides uh, and the slide deck up for it, it was kind of before we started the, the formative summit and, that formative summit was just amazing. Uh, the lineup of uh, educators and people that you put together and the awesome conversations and the resources that were shared, uh, that formative su summit, I'm glad it's still open too because there's about one or two of the nine, I think there's nine in total. There's still a couple that I haven't had a chance to go uh, look at, but that was just outstanding PD and such a valuable resource. And that just speaks to the formative community it's always growing. There's always looking for new ideas, uh, new ways to share uh, how to use formative, uh, new ways to uh, share how to be a better teacher, or to try, you know, some new skills with the students. Uh, like just even talking to this one here, just hearing Don's uh, idea there about the fast and curious. I'm curious about that. So that's why I love this so much. There's always new ideas, but that formative su summit, I just uh, can't say enough good things about it. And you get some PD certificates out of it if you're looking for that but uh, the notes are there if you need the notes and you want a quick read over it 
But uh, just to listen to some of the conversations that were there, I'd encourage people to grab a, a cup of coffee. If they have a half an hour, it'd be time very well spent and then share your thoughts, um, you know, in the community. Oh, it's, it's coming up. Like this was just a, a phenomenal um, initiative. And uh, yeah, I, I hope that uh, people take advantage of it and go and check it out because it was just uh, fantastic. Like look at that lineup. Uh, and like some of these guys write their own books and these guys are well known, uh, you know, throughout. So it's amazing that, uh, you know, they're all so personable and just sharing uh, their information freely and want people to reach out for them and want you to join up and, uh, you know, hook, hook up with them on Twitter and share ideas. So uh, that was just a, a huge opportunity for uh, me as an educator. And it's just, you know, one of the many things that being part of this uh formative community uh is is so definitely it's a great uh you know professional learning uh community and there's so many great great things so like i have in there uh get involved uh you can lurk you can just kind of go and give people a little uh love with a little like and just say hey, that was a cool idea or, or you can jump right in and say hey, i'd like to read a uh, lead a, a webinar or i'd like to do an iron chef thing there are a lot of ways to do it, whatever your comfort level is to start out with and just, yeah, start with that. Start with one thing. Hey, how do you upload a picture? Or you can get more in-depth. Here's a, a formative I made. How would you guys, uh, you know, put this together? Or what would you add? Or, hey, what do you think with this? And like Don was mentioned before, um, you know, such a supportive community and people just dive in there. So I would just tell people, join up. Be a part of this. It's, it, it will definitely, uh, you'll be glad you did. And I'll pass it over to Dawn for uh, her slide. Um, one of my tips is the get into the library. That uh, the library is a new feature in last six months or so, maybe I guess. And uh, people are putting their formatives into the library, and it's searchable and it's tagged with uh, various ways. And you can you often find something that you can at least start with and then tweak it to whatever your curriculum or um, how much you want to include in there. So I've picked up a few things um, from the library that I thought were pretty cool and worked from there. There's no point in reinventing the wheel if you don't have to, as we know, teachers are short on time. And if you can save time one some way, then do it. And uh, you get to see how various features are used within a formative. And my other tip is just to ask questions. Um, everybody that's in the community is always willing to jump in and answer. And sometimes you, uh, even those of us who have been informative for a long time, learn things from other people's answers that we didn't even know ourselves. So uh, it's a great way to learn by asking questions. So we're always telling our kids, there's no such thing as a dumb question. There really isn't, just ask away. Definitely. Thank you so much both for the, the great tips. I think uh, once you join the community, just a tip from me is just uh, don't be, uh, don't, don't hesitate to, to tag other uh, teachers when, when you're reaching out for help. Um, just coming back to the community center here to show you, um, if you're just going to start a new topic, let's say you're just reaching out because you want some ideas for using formative to, to do science labs in your classroom. Uh, when you're reaching out to the community and posting a topic here, you can actually uh, tag different subject areas like all the science educators. And you can see uh, it's gonna notify a, a lot of the, all the science educators in our community center. Um, there's, there's one for every subject area, like math, science, uh, ELA, uh, it goes on and on, really. And you can see they're all formatted the same way, just so you guys can see there. Uh, just starts with the subject, followed by underscore, and then educators. So, yeah, please uh, feel free to tag your subject areas when, when you're talking about them, when you're talking about your subjects. Uh, also, feel free to tag people, you know. Um, you can always tag me, at David, or... Uh, you know, Don, if, if she's involved in a discussion or Dean, there's just so many great people that you're going to see that 
appear again and again throughout the community. And those are good people to connect with and, and learn from and, and share ideas with too, because uh, they're, because they're uh, collaborating. Um, but uh, that's it for me in terms of the last tip. I'd just love to thank you, Dean, and uh, say thank you, Dean, and thank you, Don, uh, both for for sharing your uh, incredible tips and just uh, reflecting on your experience in the community. And uh, yeah, if, did anybody have any anything they wanted to say? Feel free to unmute yourself. <laughs> it's been a it's a, as usual it's always a learning experience and it's always uh fun to say hi to dean across the country <laughs> and uh to find out that uh you know we're not the only uh people who are cold right now <laughs> definitely and dean well, you're muted nice, but it's not too bad here in uh, Regina. Actually, it's not snowing yet, so we're pretty happy about that. Uh, but yeah, you know, even just this is a great example of the community just watching this webinar and talking. Is like I learned things just by doing it. But I just really, it, it, I've been part of other communities too, and that, and has been really good. But I really like the feel of this one. I think I mentioned to you before, David. This feels like more like a like you're in a staff room of colleagues that are like minded and that are. You know, there's no egos and that type of thing. It's just a really nice, safe place to go and share ideas. People are friendly. Um, I just get such a good vibe from the community and the people in there. And it's always growing, and it's just and uh, it's growing the right way too. It's it, you know, it's it's growing like to help people out. It's not trying to be something that it's not. Like I'm not sure if I'm explaining myself right, but I would just encourage people to to. Come on board, get on board, even if you're just kind of, um, you know, lurk for a little while and then just dive in. And and I also would like to give uh, David some props. Uh, David's such a great leader of this uh, program. Um, I'm really, uh, I consider him a friend. He's a good man. And um, uh, I think they picked a, a really good person to be in, in, uh, in charge of the community engagement for sure. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Dean. Um... Yeah, thank you so much. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a pleasure working with both of you and everyone watching out there. Hope you enjoyed this uh, webinar and uh, have a good day. Thanks, guys. Thanks, have guys. a good one. Have a good one.